So it's time to talk Gaelic games once again on Highland Radio and our National Football League preview. I'm delighted to say I'm joined by our very own uh, Martin McHugh and from Radio Kerry, a commentator, Tim Moynihan. Gentlemen, you're welcome to Highland once again. Thank you. Thanks, Ashley. Well, Martin, I hope you don't mind. We'll let the, let the visitors go first. Well, they're not the visitors at the weekend. We're going to be the visitors. They're going to be the hosts. Uh, Tim Moynihan of Radio Kerry, uh, first of all, how much can you guys read into that one over D- Dublin the last day out for you? Obviously, very little, uh, Oshin. Um, you know, we came off the week before. We struggled against uh, Kildare in the second half of that game. It was the first game. It was the first game, competitive game for Jack O'Connor and going into, I, I suppose, familiar territory uh, for Jack. So I think it was a terrible night in Trilly, uh, that game against Dublin, a packed. Of course, uh, the big thing over the last couple of years, Trilly is, um, you know, really grown for the Mayo games, the under lights, likewise the Dublin game. And a huge expectancy, an expectancy of a Kerry win. And the good thing about Kerry, they, you know, they put on a marker early on in that game. But uh, Dublin seemed rudderless in that game and, and Kerry really took advantage of that. Um you know, it depends what the opposition want. You have to go out, you have to kick scores. And Kerry did that. And I suppose the one positive, you know, the week before I did a post-match interview with, with um, Jack O'Connor and, uh, you know, where the midfield of Kildare really took over in the second half of, of that game. The good thing this time, Dermot O'Connor, he's promised so much over the last couple of years that he seems to be coming of age. Like you can't read too much into one particular game, but it's something Jack wants. He wants a settled midfield and a backup at midfield. So he had the two Nabil guys that weren't uh, available the week before because of, of Nabil being involved in the Intermediate Club Championship. So that was a huge positive. But plus about, I, I suppose, a lot of guys got involved in that dirty ball around the middle of the field. And that's something, uh, and I know Martin could could allude to this as well, that you need play, players to of the calibre of the Paul Gavins, the Thomas Sullivans, the Daras, the Thomas O'Shea's. Jack O'Connor always had go-to players, uh, O'Shea. And that's what he's trying to identify with this panel of players. You know, he was involved with a number of them at minor level, but now they're men. And what leaders, what can you do in a game when your, your back is to the wall? And he's looking for those sort of characters. And, and they will be tested. They've been tested in the Dublin game and, and likewise the Donegal game Sunday, you know. Yeah. What's your thoughts on Kerry in 2022, Martin? What have, what have you seen of them so far this year? And what's your thoughts ahead, as, ahead of the rest of the league and obviously the championship? How big a year is this for Kerry, do you feel, given that they had uh, big disappointments over the course of the last couple of years, Martin? Yeah, well, I think looking at it, uh, Jack O'Connor always won the first year he goes in in All-Ireland. And looking at so far the demise of Dublin, you'd feel like you know, it was a great chance for Kerry to win the All-Ireland. I haven't seen much difference in the style of football that that they're that they've play, they played and everything else. And uh, you know, of course, the big thing about them is Paddy Talley going down there and what defensively, coaching them defensively, how they're going to be that way. Because they're, I'm looking at taking the Dublin defence of the last maybe what ten years and the Kerry defence of the last ten years. I feel the Dublin defenders defend first and then attack. Where the Kerry defenders are all good footballers and they look like they all want to attack. That's the, you know, the first thing on their mind and maybe forgetting about defending a bit. And you know, we look at the throne game last year. I know they missed a lot of chances carrying them else, but in the end of it, it was three goals they conceded, two in normal time and the one in extra time that, that cost them the match and everything else. So yeah, I think there's a lot of work with for, for Jack O'Connor not going in there. But the post is the interesting thing from 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 Kerry's point of view and Jack's point of view is he's played a very, very strong team in in, in the McGrath Cup and in, in the two league games. And, uh, you know, suppose uh, uh, we look at it, you know, the, the, the David Clifford factor is always going to be massive and everything else. But one player, even in Kerry, and Kerry, as strong as Kerry's not not going to win the All-Ireland, the midfield is the other big one. And we, we talked about, you know, that the automatically after the Kildare game and Tim has covered it there very well he was at the match the, you know their midfield struggled against Kildare particularly in the second half then he took two lads that hadn't played that were involved in their club and intermediate club in Kerry and put the two of them right in and in, into into the into the match the big match against Dublin you know who Dublin, Dublin normally be strong in the middle of the field so we look at it will he get his midfield right where does David Moran stand in, in, in the middle of the field he's been one of the best midfielders in Ireland this last while but I think he's about 34 years of age you know can he carry on everything else so midfield is going to be very important for them to win that battle and everything else how their defence goes and everything else and I suppose the big question is there's been a couple of games and Tim would know this a lot better than me in the last three years that they probably should have won. And normally Kerry teams in the past would have got over the line. We had the Tyrone game last last year. You had the Mayo match. And 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 you know, we had the Dublin Dublin final when Dublin were down to 14 men. And I thought they should have won them matches and they didn't get over the line. So 
yeah, a lot of question marks about Kerry and everything else, but you still would say with a bunch of players they have and everything else, Oshin, you would have to class them with the way Dublin's going at the minute. Did you have to class them as favourites for the All Ireland? Is Jack O'Connor the right man in place now, Tim, to uh, I suppose make these wrongs right or be part of this Kerry setup that gets them over the, the line and won games that, that they should have won? Is Jack yeah. O'Connor the right man at the right time now? Look, there was a lot of controversy at the at the time when Jack came in in the sense that the way it was dealt with, and now that's all we hope is buried. But the one thing about Jack, and likewise, Jack knows when he has material that the times he got involved with Kerry, he sees something and maybe something that he will get the best out of. Yeah, when I look around the county, you know, they name all these names, but you're going back to a guy with a, a track record uh, second to none in, in recent decades with Kerry. So... That was the big thing about Jack O'Connor coming back. But uh, as Martin says there, there's a lot of question marks. You, you know, down here in Kerry, there's a huge expectancy. Every year, there's an expectancy, by, I suppose because of our tradition, that, you know, you're out there and you should be at the business end and hopefully bring back Sam McGuire. So, and it's interesting there, Martin mentioned Paddy Talley. The thing with the last couple of years that we were below against Cork in Parky Creeve. Uh, during COVID, in a game that we expected we were playing a Division 3 team, we should have won, and suddenly we went very defensive and, and invited uh, Cork onto us. Turned into a dogfight, what happens? Cork get a goal and beat us. Uh, and, and that's the disappointment down here in Kerry that, you know, say if you have a full forward line of, of Paul Ganey, uh, Tony Ross in the other corner, and David Clifford in full forward, and it really nice people to see them playing behind their half-back line when we're under pressure and we're obviously inviting teams on to us, which we've done actually against Donegal in the past. I think the last time we played Donegal was in 2020 down here. And I think Donegal kind of the pedal off the metal that day because they were preparing for uh, Tyrone two weeks later in the championship. So a lot of people question the style of football and, and Jack, and he know himself that you'll invite pressure on to yourself as a manager. Kerry public requires a certain style of football. They think we're most comfortable when we attack. And I know Martin said there we have conceded goals, but a lot of it is where we've invited teams on to us that if we kept pinning teams back and pressing up high, that we get results. So there's a lot of things factoring in, if I if I can be understood in that way, with Kerry in the sense that the supporters play a big, big part here in Kerry. And part of it is the style of football we've been playing. But Jack has gone for Paddy Tally, Paddy Tally, and we know he's very defensive in his ways, but can we counter-attack then in a certain way? You look at Dublin, when Dublin were dominant, Dublin always left Bernard Brogan, Paul Mannion, and other players not more than 35, 40 metres out from the opposition goal. So if a ball was turned over, they would an out ball. But suddenly when Kerry are uh, trying to play this, again, this alien to us, that a lot of bodies behind the ball and we've no out ball. So it'll be interesting how Jack will get that balance right, um, Oshin. From a Kerry point of view, what sort of game are you expecting against Donegal at the weekend, Tom? Um, I expect, first of all, I, I expect to probably now is the is the time to uh, try out other players as well. Now, we, we've been very fortunate. We, we seem to have found, without putting pressure on the man, uh, he's Dan O'Donoghue. He's, he's from the Spa Club here in, in Killarney. And uh, he seems to be a fine, something, we, you know, this, this no-nonsense defender. So he's looking at different individuals as well, as well as putting a structure in place. And, and we, now... I, I suppose we want to see what the structure and the system of Paddy Tally will that be an ongoing process where we can see bodies behind the ball and and you know the counter attack and and I know Martin probably he have heard Ambrose in the past uh, Ambrose have done I mean, we, as uh, Martin alluded to that we have a lot of attacking halfbacks and even cornerbacks and if we're saying our forwards are as good as they are we seem to be clogging up space when we come forward and that's something one and one we have dangerous forwards and sometimes with all the backs that want to attack we seem to go into cul de sacs and it'll be interesting to see will we play the open spaces of of Fitzgerald Stadium and that and I suppose to build I, I suppose that's what Jack O'Connor is trying to do to build on on the success against Dublin as well as find out these characters that I see he's looking for that you know guys that live on the edge, four or five players that will do things for, for the winning of the game. And, you know, uh, as Ambrose would tell you, uh, like, too many nice fellas don't win your game. You have to have guys, you know, that, that work so hard for the team, will do things, take one for the team. And they are the characters. And we've seen the teams have been successful over the last couple of years, Oshin, that they have those players uh, in abundance. 
And that's something that's probably lacking in Kerry since the, you know, the change over there. They were big numbers to lose that time, the Darrow Shays, the, the, the Paul Gallows and the Tomas O'Shea. And they were all around the same time. And to, and to replace, they were, they were winners. And to, and to re replace that sort of winning mentality, that's what Jack is looking for, you know. Yeah, um, Killarney Martin. Um, we almost beat Kerry in 2018 in, in Killarney. Uh, a late score in the match by Kerry gave them victory there. There was three players I think sent off on that day, so it it, it could turn out to be a, a good hunting ground for for Donegal this weekend if Kerry play like the way Tim is is suggesting. Um, yes, Donegal are down bodies, Martin, but can they run Kerry close this weekend? Well, it's interesting what Tim was saying there about forwards going, go, backs going forward and crowding out the forward lane. I've been giving out about that in Donegal, that that's what we're basically doing in Donegal. Maybe it's the modern day coaching and what they want to, you know, some people say keep teams honest and all this here and push up. And uh, to me, it's the exact same as Tim has said, it's crowding it out on players. And when you've got quality forwards, which Donegal would have as well, I think the more space you leave for them, the better. And, you know, keep defenders as defenders if you can. You have enough going forward from midfield up. But I, th I think, you know, um, we probably have a bad record in Kerry. Uh, I think, I don't know, I'm not 100% sure, was on the last team that actually beat Kerry down in Kerry in a famous game, I think it was 1988 or something. Tom Conan was managing Donegal and Mick O'Dwyer was managing Kerry. And maybe we did one since that, Osh, I'm not 100% sure down there. But I always remember that game, and it was a famous game. Um, there was a toss of coin and Tom Conan won the toss and we were wearing the green and gold that him we got the green and gold and Kerry were wearing blue and they weren't used to it and actually Pat Spillane passed the ball to a Donegal player and we ended up getting through and scoring a goal that day and that won us the match down in Kerry so that was a big big achievement for us at the time and it was great you know you know we're kind of moving up the divisions at that stage and we we're trying to you know that was probably a big big thing and give us a lot of confidence and going down to Kerry and, and getting a victory there so you know it's a, it's a great place to go uh, and get get a, get a victory and everything else but as Tyrone found out last year, you can go down there too and you can get a good hammer down there too if they get on top of you and everything else. And uh, as Tim was saying, they're trying out other players and everything else. And that's maybe not a good thing for Donegal. They'd be better if they're putting out the boys that are normally playing on the team and everything else. But I think it, it's a it's a game that, I suppose, when Donegal sat, sat down at the start of the year, is one they didn't expect to get, they don't expect to get two points from and everything else. So anything you get back up as a bonus. But there's no pressure on Donegal going down, Kerry, or favourites and everything else. And, uh, you know, it, uh, it's hard to beat, you know, putting yourself against the best and that's the carry of the Dublins in this world and that's when you know as a player particularly a younger player you know where you're at and everything else when you do that and uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to it you know two very very good footballing, footballing teams and uh, we hopefully as, as Tim said earlier on maybe off air if the conditions are, are, are we're not expecting a good weekend but hopefully by Sunday the conditions will be better Better than the one maybe Saturday and uh, Friday and Saturday. Sorry, but I'm I'm looking forward to it. I'm really looking forward to see some of these young Donegal players, the Connor O'Donnells, the Shane O'Donnells, and these type of players. How they do against the likes of of the Kerry Kerry players, the Kerry defence, and everything else. So yeah, all you need and what you want out of it. And Tim has said it from a Kerry point of view. We're no different Donegal. We need pluses out of it. We need to get ready for the championship. And I think Tim and I would say this. I think it's a big help to Kerry this year because. With the Munster Champions and everything else, and then they're getting, you know, they're, maybe that's why Jack's playing big teams in every game that he's playing this year, maybe his full team, because he's getting ready for the Champions and everything else. And you don't have that big a test, with no disrespect to the teams in Munster, you know, that big a test. So I think this whole thing of a quick turnover from league to championship, I believe, well, actually, the team most it will help is Kerry going forward. So they'll be ready when they land in Crow Park. If we look at when they played Tyrone last year, Tyrone had played Cavan. Who were the Ulster champions? They played Donegal, who were one up there with the favourites, you know, had won Ulster's last couple of years. And they played Monaghan, who were all two Division One teams. They were ready for that match, where maybe Kerry weren't actually ready for it. But I think this year, that system, the new system there, will actually help Kerry, Tom. Absolutely. And there's substance in what you say there, Martin. If I was to go back to the Tyrone, you know, that debacle we were on about, you know, because of COVID, they couldn't play us when they should be playing us. Even for that extra week that we were giving them for the first, uh, you know, the refixture, everyone in Kerry, in the Kerry camp felt they were going to hit the, the, the ground running because they, that was the time they were hitting it. And I reckon if we met Tyrone and we should have met them, uh, we'd have beaten them. And that's been honest. Because what happened then, you were waiting an extra two weeks and guys, and you know as well, Martin, from your playing days, you, 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 you build yourself up to hit the ground running at a certain time. You train, to, like Mikko Dewar, you train to yourself to be fit for his training sessions. And then those training sessions were to hit that ground on a Sunday. So I felt 
that was two weeks more and Kerry went flat and we were caught. Now, there was a huge expectancy in the county, but that too, because it's gone, it's meticulous now in your preparation. It's like, like the guy training for the Olympics 100 metres final. He don't give it all in the first round heat. And that was what's, what happened, Kerry. And I genuinely, to this day, think that if we met him when we were supposed to, we'd have beaten Tyrone. We probably would have won the All-Ireland. That's me. Uh, and I think the exact same way because the season is so compact and so tight that you're talking about. Like the Sam McGuire being somebody's house come the 25th of July, uh, somewhere in the, in, in the country. And this is how tight it is. that you, and, and that's the big thing. I, I think the league has taken on a huge profile, lads, and not just for building. I, I remember, and you know that, Martin, there was times, there was a social aspect to the league going back decades ago. And where you were preparing and you'd you'd winter well and come January and February, you'd tag out for Mikko Dwyer and he'd probably look at you and he'd say, a lot of work to be done here. And you were ready come the first round of the championship, which probably would be in, well into May that time. So it's totally different. It's gone to a different level. It's evolved. And because it's, you want to be at the business end of, and that's why I think it means a lot both to Donegal and Kerry this Sunday, that you want to be at the business end and that quick turnaround straight in to get, to, and there's nothing worse that, and we have that problem in Munster with the last number, but all due respect, and I'm sure that they're common, if not, if they're not here already, the likes of the Cox of this world, there was no challenge in Munster, and suddenly you'll meet a team in the heat of the championship that have come out of Ulster, and after playing three or four games against top level teams, and they were well ahead of us because we hadn't done that, you know, hadn't had those challenges. And and, and you're dead right. We would expect the season this year to, to benefit Kerry in some way with that quick turnaround. And, and I totally agree with what you said there, Martin. Would it be a disappointing year and a huge disappointment in Kerry if that Sam Maguire wasn't in Kerry come July, Tim? You know, I suppose when you were younger, you were saying, oh, you want Kerry there every year. But, you know... It's all about, you know, are you good enough? Have you the material? And we seem to have the material. Look, Jack didn't come in for a, a five-year plan, you know, Oshin. Jack was brought in to win in All-Ireland. The Winning in All-Ireland and Kerry is everything else is put aside. And sometimes maybe that's part of our failure that sometimes we take uh, the eye off a certain ball elsewhere. But that that's the pressure. And it, it hasn't changed down here. And Jack was brought in to win in All-Ireland with this group of players. And we'd expect over, you know, you go back to 2019, I reckon we should have beaten Dublin uh, in the drawing game. And we, and one guy, and I remember Jack O'Shea doing an interview, I think it was on the, the Friday night on the build-up, and he said, pound for pound, we probably won't match Dublin, but we have one player that if they can't handle him, and that, you know, he was the top of his game coming on, being an impact, and that was Tommy Walsh. The Dublin, the ball was sticking well because of his physicality and guys could feed off him. And we could have popped over pints, but we left it too late to bring him on. So that was one, as, as as far as we were concerned, that got away from us. Again, during the middle of COVID, we were saying we should have beaten Cork down in Cork. And there was an expectancy there to win then. Uh, last year was a kind of a shambles toward the end of the season, purely because, and it wasn't in anybody's making. And it's, it's, it's the way things happened. Uh, the COVID card was played by Tyrone. And, you know, obviously they had problems in the camp, but it worked in, to their advantage so that's and you know the biggest part of this these guys fair enough they're 23 24 years of age now the, the shawnee o'shea's the david clifford's the dara minans of this world and we feel now that these these guys are men and it would be a chance lost if we weren't at the business end we've no divine right uh ocean to win the all ireland but there's a huge expectancy we've been away too long uh and sam mcguire has been away too long as far as the supporters is concerned and and you know, we we're talking about this famous minor team, you know, the, the five in a row that players should have come off at O'Sheen. And, and fair enough, a number of players have come off it. And maybe we had really good players on that team, the David Cliffords and the Shawnee Shays, Mark O'Connor, who's gone to Australia. And because their performances alone won us games, and maybe we're looking, we should have more players off it. But when you, we, David Clifford kicked 4-4 four, four in an All-Ireland final at minor level, that could cover a lot of cracks in the team. And... Have we the players good enough? Now is the chance for guys to put up their hand. And our county championship was really competitive this year. And there you have some of the stats there. You have Greg Horn coming in there. I know Joe Connor, the present Kerry captain, is out injured. Uh, you know, at the moment we have players coming through. Stefan Ockenberg, of course, the Nagail player that was playing down under. He's there, but unfortunately, there's four or five injuries there with Kerry in the camp at the moment. So hopefully they'll they'll come together in the next couple of weeks. But look. All I'd say is that Jack O'Connor was brought in to win the All Ireland this year, and any shot, I suppose, any shortness of of winning that will be deemed a failure in Kerry. 
Yeah. Okay, let's put, go back to the game that's taking place this weekend. Martin, he mentioned uh, the likes of David Clifford, who scored 4-4 in an All-Ireland final. How does Donegal deal with David Clifford and how does Donegal deal around the middle of the park, which was mentioned earlier as well? Uh, Tim did say that, that Jack's trying out uh, in and around the middle of the park, which will be vital uh, come Sunday. So how does Donegal deal with all these elements? Yeah, well, I think, you know, just driving through the county and talking to people in the county, the amount of people said, I'm go we're going to Kerry, we're going down to see David Clifford. So that's just how good he is. Uh, people just want to see him in the flesh and see him playing. And, you know, he's a, an unbelievable player. I think he reminds me of, 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 of all the great players that played Gaelic football. And I think the big thing in them was the Morris Fitzgeralds, even the Peter Canavans, the, the, the David Cliffords and the Matt Connor, who I'd remember, maybe used men wouldn't remember Matt Connor. But if they get the ball in their hands, that's trouble. And that's it. They're, 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 you're in big trouble. It doesn't matter how many players you want on them. If they get the ball in their hands, and Clifford's one of them players. And he showed it even the last night uh, for UL. You know, he, um, he was well marked by the, the, the Kildare fullback. He did a good enough job on him and everything else, but ended up winning the game because he got five balls or so in his hands and what he does with them. So, Washington, to answer your question, you have to stop the supply if you can at all. And, you know... Uh, Get get you know. I'm going to go back to the game in 2020, Martin, and the the super tw or 2019. It was was it the Super Eights that we played, Kerry? Stephen McMenamin had a very very good game on David Clifford that day in Croke Park. Yeah, that's a fair enough point. And Stephen's coming back, but Stephen's coming back from injury, and Clifford's what so many years older now. I mean, he's a lot lot better player now than he than he was then. But it's it's a big task for anybody to mark him. You know, you say to yourself. If you hold him to about what about three points from play, I think you'd be doing really well. I think that's what you have to say. And a player of of that quality, and if you can do that, you've 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 a chance. That's what I feel about. Him. But he listen quality, and he's big as well, which makes a big difference in the modern game. And he's two feet. His right foot looks to be as strong as his left. So it's great if Kerry's playing anybody else. You love watching him and love seeing what he's doing and everything else. But he's quality, and he is worth you know, the money to go to see him play in anywhere because even he's playing tonight for UL in the final and there'll be a lot of people all over the country glued to to watch him and uh, watch him. Uh, you know, I think somebody said Sean Kelly, the, the Galway captain might end up marking him tonight. So it's going to be a difficult job for anybody. But I think that that looking at it is that I think the important thing is to stop the supply and the midfield is going to be very important. But I think Kerry are happy with their midfield performance that they had the last day against Dublin. Now, Donegal is going to be a different test in the middle of the field for them. Donegal have always been strong enough in the middle of the field. You know, we'll be happy enough with, with our midfield that we're playing. And uh, I know we'll make a Langan play or not, but he'd be an important cog in that area. Will Jason McGee be available or not? And that area, and you've Keelan McGonagall who's playing well in that area. So we've got players in that area. So it'll be good. That'll be a good test. It'll be young, young lads against each other in that area. So the midfield will be very important. So to win that, I'll, I'll make a big difference because you still feel that we'd still feel that our full forward lane will cause the Kerry full back lane plenty of problems if we get enough possession in, in that area. So yeah, if Steve McMenamin is available, it'll be a great old battle again to see him. He did really, really well in Crow Park that day on David Clifford, no doubt about it. And we know how Tigers he played, and he's been a big miss to Donegal. And, you know, is he back, how fit he is and everything else? And will it be fair to put him to put him on David Clifford or that there? But you're looking at the other two carry forwards. They're not that far behind Clifford and everything else. But I think Tim made a great point, which is important in the modern game, is the carry players. And Paul Galvin was probably the unsung hero. And they don't have a, maybe that type of player that Kerry are missing at the minute. And it's very important. It's something maybe in Donegal. We might have a lot of naturally talented footballers as well. And not enough of the type of players that will win the dirty ball and pick up that ball, which is important. Where we always say about our neighbours in Tyrone, most of them all are capable capable of doing that. And will do, as, as Thomas said earlier on, whatever it takes for the team to win a match. So that's why... We're looking forward to it and everything else in a league match. And, you know, hopefully you never know. We could meet down the road again in a big championship game. Well, uh, just looking at the other games briefly, uh, obviously both sets of players have already played Kildare. Uh, Tim, we'll go to you in this one. Kildare making the trip to play Tyrone. Tyrone, of course, drew their opening match, uh, suffered defeat at the hands of, of Armagh. Is this another game that Kildare can, can cause a shock in? Yeah, uh, possibly, and especially I, I think they have to serve that one match suspension as well. Uh, those four players that are out, um, Kildare again are, are starting from. Actually, they've um, their backroom team is unbelievable, and obviously those guys, you know, bring a lot to the table. So the one thing I saw, they were dogged. You no know, Newbridge um, that day against Kerry, it's a tight pitch, and they really worked that. And and you know, I could go back to Kerry again. Kerry went lateral, so it was into the hands then of the likes of Flynn in the middle of the park for Kildare to break at pace. And that's where they caused us the, the biggest problems, you know, that day with Sherlock up front. Um, Kildare 
have a huge expectancy from this season that in, in their development. And they, they'd hope to give it. They can see Dublin as well, you see. And that, I think that's the carrot. And I know if Martin agrees with me that Dublin, I know Dublin haven't gone away, but they have come back to the field. And that gives everyone a chance in Leinster. So if you can build on these games, and, and especially, I'd say, they'll look at themselves, we're fortunate to be playing in Division 1. And that's where, you know, more than likely, the All-Ireland winner will come out of Division 1. And we, it'd be a huge shock if it didn't. So this is a chance, again, for them to put on a, a marker kill there. They have a lot of learning to do, a lot of structure. But they will give themselves, and, and especially you have to take advantage of those points. And if they see that Tyrone are missing players... Uh, they'll try and take advantage of that. And if you turn it into a dogfight, and that's something I haven't seen in Kildare with years, you know, and, you know, we've said about the dirt, they were winning the dirty ball. You know, I, I think you need badness, and I mean in badness in within the rules to win a game. And in that game in Newbridge, Oshin, the badness came from Kildare. And when I say the badness, winning that dirty ball, stopping players, sometimes we can be cynical who are, when we're commentating, we can call it a cynical tackle, but they did what they had to in the second half, you know, to take the game to carry. And you, that's something you can manufacture it. You have to find players that are capable of doing it and know when to do it. And that came from Kildare that day. And uh, it's something I've never been seen in the DNA of Kildare before. And they did what they had to, to get, you know, we shared the spoils, but to get what they could out of the game. And it, re it really showed the second half of that game, you know. Martin, will there be much badness within the rules between Dublin and Mayo this weekend? One of the standout out ties. And uh, both sides will be very eager to get into each other in, in that one. Uh, that could be a real cracker. So it could on Saturday. Yeah, it could be on Saturday in, in Crow Park. And, you know, uh, um, looking at it, Mayo picked up two very important points against Mullen in the last day, and then they got the point against Donegal. So they've got the, they have the three points got. So the pressure's off them. I think Dublin need they need it. They need it. They need the, they need the victory in this year. And I expect Dublin in Crow Park and else to come out on top. There's maybe talk will Conor Callan be back this weekend or or not? Will Dean Rock start and everything else? They still have a lot of players in Dublin. I think as Tom said, they haven't gone away. They have a lot of players there. Maybe we end up when the championship comes around, the pressure, a bit of pressure and everything else is off them. We're really looking forward to seeing them, what they'll be like, particularly later later on later on in the league and everything else. But Mayo, from the point of view, they had two great victories, considering you know they've been very, very unlucky with injuries, Mayo. Every year they've lost a big player to injuries, killing O'Connor last year and then this year, Tommy Conroy. You know, not picking up, you know, a small injury, but them out even for six or seven weeks. They've gone for the year and everything else. So very, very unfortunate that way. But they'll still keep battling, keep Keep, keep the, you know, the Mayo were always hard to beat and everything else, and they'll be there, thereabouts when it comes down to it, and they end up. And, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to it and really looking forward to seeing Dublin uh, on Saturday night to see what, what they're like. And, and you know, in Crow Park, they were, you know, very disappointed against Armagh in the first game in Crow Park, but Armagh would have a lot of work done where Dublin didn't have that work done and everything else. So that made a big difference. So I'm looking forward to it. I expect a Dublin, a Dublin victory, a Dublin victory in that game. Okay, then, Martin, how are you teeing up Armagh against Monaghan? Armagh certainly. Have been the the find in Division One, the form team in Division One. Will they carry that into Saturday evening against the against the Farney men? This is a big game. This is really, I think, going to be the big game of the weekend. This is going to be, you know, Mar 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 were disappointed to be beaten in the semi final last year by Mon and everything else. And there's great old rivalry, and they met in the McKenna Cup. Uh, uh, McKenna Cup match and it went to it went to penalties and they end up so they're not much between them. Uh, pressure on Monon because they didn't get the two points against Mayo. Armagh have been flying and everything else and uh, I just have a sneaking feeling for Monon in this match. I just uh, I know it's an athletic grounds and everything else and Armagh will be favourites and everything else but I just think Monon will run at Armagh and teams that run at Armagh I still think causes them problems and everything else and uh, you know it's going to be it's going to be a big physically tough battle around the middle of the field and everything else but. It really, it's a game I'm looking forward. I'd love to be able to go to see and everything else. I just have a feeling that maybe Monon could win this match. Okay. Uh, just moving in briefly, Martin, to, to Division 2. Donegal, of course, have one of the longest treks of the year heading to Kerry on Sunday. Uh, Cork are going to make one of the longest trips of the year as well. They're heading north to play Derry in uh, the third round of Division 2. Rory Gallagher's Derry, two ones from two, but do you expect Cork to be the toughest test yet for them? Probably is and everything else, but uh, uh, I still expect Derry to win at home. I think Derry are, are a common team with a lot of talent and they've had a lot of success at underage in Derry. And, uh, you know, we see Steelstone even won in the club champion, the club, uh, the club intermediate club and everything else. So Derry are on the up and uh, I expect Derry at home to win. I think looking at the league matches, Osh, you know, we look at a lot of them. home advantage is, is, is a big thing. And uh, we talk, you know, Tim talks about Kildare drawn with Kerry in, in, uh, 
in Newbridge, where they were very disappointed we were at the match against Donegal and everything else. We, you know, most a lot of games are won, I won at home. I know Mayo went to Mon and had a, had a good victory and everything else, but uh, Tyrone were beaten by our man. I think home advantage is a big advantage, and I, I just think Derry at home and the way they're going and everything else, and I expect Chrissy McCaig to be back. He missed the Offaly game and everything else, and to go down to Offaly and beat them by thirteen points down in Offaly, they're they're on a mission definitely to get out of that division. I think you have a you have to win every match because the field. I don't think Cork will be in it, and the promotion race. I think. It It'll come, the promotion race will come down between between uh, Galway, Roscommon and Derry. So I think it's important that each of them teams, they play each other, uh, keep one and everything else. So I know, I think Cork are rebuilding with a new management in there and everything else. So I expect Derry to win that option. OK, then let's go back to uh, our feature game on Sunday. Full live match commentary, of course, here on Highland. From Fitzgerald Stadium, Killarney. Kerry played Donegal, throws in at 145. We'll be live from 1.30 with Ryan Ferry and Martin McHugh, the commentary team, this weekend. So, Tim, how are you calling this one at the weekend? Can we expect a game similar to what took place the last time they met where Kerry won easy? Or is there a 120 a piece on the cards like what we've seen at Croke Park previously? I think, Ocean, I go with the latter. I, you know, as I said earlier, when we met in October, was it 2020? I think there was a bigger fish to fry than Kerry because they were looking at the Ulster Championship, Donegal. And... You know, as I said earlier, that you know, if you could pick up some a point along the way uh, or two points along the way, it's bonus territory because there is an expectancy on the teams playing at home to win. So I think it'll be a lot closer than people think. I know there's injuries with both parties, but uh, again, I wouldn't be reading too much into the Dublin game with Kerry. D- Dublin look rudderless, and and I I know they haven't gone away, but one thing, if I can allude to it, that particular evening, I was looking at Desi Farrell after 15 minutes, his body language. He didn't know what happened. Do you know what I mean? He was looking down on the ground. He was right underneath us where we were doing the commentary, Ambrose and myself, and he was in front of the dugouts. And, you know, if that, that was only 15 minutes into the game. And it was kind of worrying from a, from a Dublin aspect. And like, like I say that, you know, that particular game, the game was gone from them after 20 minutes or so. Uh, this will be different. The wide open expanses of, of Fitzgerald Stadium. It's been a fortress for championship games, uh, Oshin. Uh, but we've lost some league games there over the years as well. So to be, there's no hiding places. It's a bit like Croke Park. There's no hiding places uh, in Fitzgerald Stadium. So and that's uh, and this. Do you know what this is all about? It's a learning curve, but you have to learn fast. And I hope that from both sides' points of view, Donegal will recognise their younger players. They're coming of age. These guys could do a job in the championship. That's what we're looking for on Sunday. So look, we're looking for a home win, but we're also looking for the structure, the system, the carrier playing, and. Are we going to let forwards be forwards? And that's the, that's the big question on every Kerry supporter. Because uh, Martin alluded, David Clifford, box office, he's, as he said, he's playing tonight for UL against NUIG. Um, we also have Paddy Clifford. We didn't mention him. To me, he's the best find since... Now, Declan O'Sullivan was a serious footballer, as you well know, Martin, uh, playing on the 40 for Kerry. And we haven't had a centre forward, to be fair, like him since. Now, I know Sean O'Shea, we're trialling him at midfield, and now he might be in the 40, but... Look at the. This is one player. I know you'll be looking for David. A lot of supporters. This guy, when he gets a ball, and not not every player playing in the county does it nowadays. He looks up. What's on? He take has a little tight in solo to himself. Step back and look, creates that opening. You know, and that's we're looking for the the foot pass and the carry football. And a lot of people are going to see Paddy Clifford on Sunday. So look, I'd hope that carry. You know, uh, put my carry hat, scrape over, and get you know that that badly needed point at home for going forward. But I expect a huge challenge from the from the Donegal side. And uh, I think that it'll be a lot closer than people think, you know. Yep. No Michael Murphy, as we said this weekend, Martin McHugh, can Donegal get a point in Killarney? At least a point in Killarney? Because if that was to happen, that would be a huge point for the season, so it would. Uh, yeah, it would be a huge, huge point in the end of it. I, I can't see Donegal getting any anything in Killarney. You know, I think the important thing out of Donegal going to Killarney this weekend is, you know, as you said, without Michael, Michael Murphy and depending a few other players, maybe they picked up knocks or mightn't be playing either. I think that we look at it as, you know, it's it's we're we're on a learning curve in a way with the young lads, a lot of young lads coming into the setup and everything else, and I think that's important. And the big one will be how we cope with the Poddy Cliffords, how we cope with the David Cliffords, how we cope with the Sean O'Shea's and everything else, and if we pick up. 
something from that that from my point of view is that we pick up something from you know players that quality and show that they can that they can compete with these lads and put them on the back foot and everything else. I think that'll be the important thing. And I think I think from a Donegal point of view, I think it'll be very important. I know there'll be a big Kerry crowd there. You know, we saw the atmosphere at the Dublin game and everything, even though it was wet and everything else, and the crowd was in very early. There's going to be a massive Kerry crowd there and everything else. We'll have to try to silent the crowd early on by maybe one in the throw in, which will be very, 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 very important uh, to one in the throw in and everything else. It's just, you know, it's just listening to. Uh, was it Conlon Gilligan doing an interview last night and he was just saying about you know, simple things they worked on in extra time and the big thing was to win the throw one and they won both throw ones because they figured out in extra time whoever wins the ball has the ball for maybe two minutes and makes a big difference and they won the two throw ones because they worked really really hard in doing that and they, I think they got a point of both of them so I think just simple things out there I think it's important that down there we get a start and we don't concede a goal particularly early on and everything else but it's a big task for Donegal for what's going to be a young Donegal team but and they end up you know there's no pressure on them and everything else I feel and I think if we get gain someone out we get Steve McMenamin I mean, you talked about back on the field be, be important Owen Van Geller big game the last day you know Michael Langan going well will Jason McGee be fit to play and everything else and we've got you know I feel two exciting players and Shane O'Donnell Conor O'Donnell up front to help support the other, the other players up there. When will have Oshin Langan back, and you know, will Jimmy Brennan be fit to come back in the ring? So, look at you're getting ready down the road. The important thing is stay in Division One. The other thing is you're getting ready down the road. This is not a game I would say we would have targeted the Declan and the management team would have targeted and everything else. They won't say that themselves out loud and everything else. But I feel it'll be important always to get something out of it and everything else. Now we look at it. Tyrone went down and got hammered in a league match, and we saw what they got out of it. So you never know what you get out of a league game and everything else. It can be totally different. So from 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 the point of view, I think I think it's important we get a good performance in Donegal. And, uh, you know, we get to see Kerry up front and everything else be important down the road. But I, I expect a Kerry victory, us. OK, we look forward to it. Martin McHugh, uh, Highland Radio Match Analyst, and Tim Moynihan, commentator with Radio Kerry. Many thanks for joining us today to look ahead to the big game this weekend. Thank you. Thanks, Oshin. See you, Tim. Thanks, lads.